is this thing on? Uh, all right. Um, hi, welcome back. Um, we had um what we in the industry call technical difficulties. Um, and by that I mean our already fired observer, our already fired observer. Their their role in the Discord server is literally fired observer now. Um, their internet just uh went out completely. Probably um, their fault too, you know. Even yeah, though you exactly. can't control your internet, like I blame him. Blame mm -hmm. Dima. But uh we come back to a one four three esports four to two lead. Oh he says I'm special. <laughs> Go back into your yeah, uh uh <laughs> your hole. Go back to your hole. <laughs> no. You <laughs> but... have to deal with me now. <laughs> All right, so You're fired got, again. We got five casters now. The main one, obviously, being our soundboard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would you have anything okay, to add to the conversation right now, public? As many bombs as they can. Nope. What I will add, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Woo. Um. I think more. You know, are you sure you're alive? Yeah, it's starting in five seconds. It's just because of delay. But uh, it's a 90 second delay. Oh it's, my it's, goodness! There you go. Now it's up. How does a delay? What is a delay? Um, but no, we are we're here. Um, while the stream was we, down, they were playing it out. It is now two four and one four three's favor. It they, is on no, the roll swap. They they already know. Like we've already been streaming. It's just on a delay. Yeah. Like okay, well no one was no one said it. I did. I said we're starting. Oh my. Go! No, no, I knew we were live. No one said that. Okay, no one was talking about the advantage for one four three. I li I already did. Well, I don't. I tune you out. Oh, okay, that's fair. And stands by um, all of us. <laughs> but before before the uh, the viewers tune me out, I am gonna point something out. And that is that this is a key in karaoke defense. And the attack is not traditional. If you look at this, there is pressure coming from all over the map, and that is entirely what is necessary. Top Frag was not being successful with this and allowed 143 Esports to get around and really just apply pressure to what the attackers wanted to do from all sides. Here, it is the exact opposite where the burrito shell is being formed by the attackers and the meat inside is the defenders this time, which is exactly how it should be. I gotta say, I love the aggression coming from Top Frag here. Playing outside, running out, shooting at windows. They are playing fast. They are looking to get picks and get their advantage rolling. Even if this site is already defender sided, they want to make sure they can secure this. However, Table taking these hits by slow walking probably needs to keep up the speed of the rest of his team, like Nyx has been doing, and getting that opening pick onto Neb that is glazed down. They are losing smokes, they are losing very long angle pressure, and I believe he still had a drone on him. This player packs already in top black, but gonna get punished for it. He pretty much just put himself right in the middle of all the defenders, and he had no support. Now we find ourselves with a huge advantage in the favor of top frag, five to two, and it is not close. Observe still on the repel over by the terrace windows. And honestly, he's not doing a whole lot. Gizma in a completely different position. Now in Dragon, these two players are not supporting each other at all. If one of them dies, there will not be a refrag. And we see that immediately, immediately that observe. And Nyx. Is I that a hip that fire? Was a hip fire? That question mark in all chat is a little deserved. Yeah, a little bit. That uh, uh... <laughs> perfect round. I was I was just complimenting 143 and how they were doing a good job of applying pressure from every direction. But then they just did not coordinate it they did not apply it at the same time and suddenly it instead of pressure from different directions it just became five isolated kills and that's what leads to flawless rounds top frag takes the first round on their defensive hat you know kind of expected defender said map well eh, a little balanced map but defender said sight mm -hmm. true uh also a defender side of sight here so yeah exhibition office um Odd site, really got to be set up correctly if you want to do well on this site. And I'm not 100% certain that Top Frag has a ton of experience with this map, especially given the fact that 143 has managed to take the lead when Top Frag did so well on Oregon of all maps. So it seems like this might just be a situation where 143 is more prepared to be on Skyscraper and the Japanese high rises than Top Frag is. Yeah, I mean, 
took the word straight out of my mouth. I couldn't say it better. That's why you're a caster. What if why, I put them uh, back? I'm retired. I don't think you can really do that, like, physically, you know? I think words are more of a, you know, like a the airwaves already came construct. out. Yeah. You know. It, it's entropic in nature, we'll put it that way. Yeah. Um, but you know what's not entropic in nature, Bagel? What is not entropic in nature, Yali? Segways are weird. Segways are weird. Speaking of segways, um, it is looking like 143 is trying to establish some early control and Table 2 Wacky going for a jump up but gets shut down by Pax on the Zofia. So that early aggression is not helping him. Maybe he should stick to being a little slower. He is one of their highest clutching players. Probably better for him to stay alive for that clutch. If he's dead, he cannot 1vx. Now there is something that I really like that 143 is doing, that is simply just this application of pressure through Terrace. If they manage to get the Dragon Wall open, that's going to be huge. Basically cuts the map in half, but with Neb off the board, that pressure is no longer viable. Suddenly, it's uh, more of a situation where 143 has to start getting themselves into the building and they're not going to have the reliability of their nets, especially now that Observe is off the board and you have no harpies whatsoever. There is a trade, but in terms of utility, Top Frag definitely comes on top there. Nyx getting another high value kill. Pax is off the board. The LMG is down now. It's just one LMG left. And, I, you know, that map control is very important, but you gotta remember this is still an FPS game. The control does not matter if you cannot get the kill off of it. However, Dizma is able to get the kill off of it, taking out Nyx, who is such a high value player in these past two rounds. It is now a 2v2 situation with Kubo and Dizma against Sunchix and Seppuku. Not much util left, but some good positions for the defenders. And with that good positioning, it gives Sentrix a huge kill onto Kubo. It is now a 2v1 in top frag's advantage. Dizma here. He has the opportunity to clutch it out. He does not have the diffuser in his hand, but honestly, who is going to plant in this situation anyway? He does have two drones on the board, opting not to use them, rather instead dry peeking here, and honestly, he may as well. There are no crossfires really set up, rather instead, Top Frag is watching two different locations all together, so being able to dry peek these things is good, but now with the awareness of the location of Ash, some rotation might come out. Seppuku looking it in the direction now to build a crossfire here in Minibar, and it's going to be impossible for Dizma to make it through here with without losing his life. Well, I say impossible. I suppose it is possible. Nothing's impossible, but it would be very difficult. Centric's making a rotation, so hopefully Dismo won't catch him out, but he's managed to gain a little bit of ground here. He only has 15 remaining. seconds left, but it's 15 seconds in for him to find these kills. One swing comes out, and it's not going to happen. Seppuku finds the crossfire, and it is fulfilled. Top frag, take us to an even like count. To four, four. I, I just... You know, I saw those bullets just going like in a T. Very, mm -hmm. very good cross, you know. There's really no way you can peek them in ones. They were just guaranteeing that it's a 1v2, you know? Yeah, absolutely gorgeously done. And that's exactly what you need to do. This is this is what one of the things that I talk about when I say adaptability is really key in, in this meta. Because if you're flexible, if you're able to position yourselves according to your teammates, you build crossfires like that and you don't lose. The second you take a man advantage, you you just convert it down and honestly i hope you all know that Defenders but uh yeah being able to build crossfires like that being able to communicate that with each other that is key in being successful speaking of being successful top frag has found themselves successful on two sites and now move on to their tertiary which they have opted for kitchen and barbecue i believe this is technically the most attacker side of map on this on or site on the map but not by much so no, it, it really comes down to a personal preference more than anything I mean, else. What, what this site comes down to, if you ask me, is how well you can hold vertically. Agreed. You know, can you get up those stairs and hold? You know, a lot of people like to sit pretty on the site, but these teams have shown their aptitude to very much enjoy going off the site. Will they do a direct take? Because 143 has also shown they love to rush. Will they get the intel that they are holding mainly above and just try to get into sight? Now, there is one other critical piece of map control that is not being held by Top Frag, and that is the Pantry. Quick Swan Peak doesn't, uh, doesn't reveal anything. Second one coming out, there's still nothing. Nyx, walking away from that one empty-handed, walks out a third time. Still nothing. I... 
I mean, I mean, honestly, I, I wouldn't have expected it either. You know, something's got to be said to the effort. But yeah. it is also a little bit of the definition of insanity. Doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. Technically, it's not the same thing because it's at a different time. Different time, but I feel like after they the first time, they might want to avoid it a little bit. You know? Mix is yelling at his teammates right now. It's like, mm -hmm. why am I barricaded off the site? <laughs> Hello? Is this bronze? Well, he's able to open it up and get away in any case, so... Yeah, minute wasted. That is huge. And with this this uh, east overtake on taking uh, taking place primarily on the top floor, pantry control is not going to do a whole lot for either team because it's going to be difficult to hold the reception and coat check anyway. But Zerv and Dizma holding the heads of two of the top drag players and another one down. We find ourselves at a two v four. Centric's getting a huge nitro, bringing it to a two. Uh, yeah, a two v four, as you said. Oh. Hmm. Um, very valuable pick that does take out their hard breacher and table getting another pick he is a 1v3 winnable for him but does not look like he will win it because the 1.5 of the lmg and just good positioning and good knowledge of where he'll come from does give him the round you know teammate calls out hey he has to be black stays finka rotates over you not, not much you're gonna do you know that the new p10 16 bullets and nerfs on the angled grip too not much you're going to do to a Finca holding an angle that knows exactly where you are. Yeah, there are not a lot of times that I've honestly seen the P10 be successful, if I'm going to be entirely honest. I've seen it over and over again. I've been casting all over the place, and almost every time, as long as, you know, I was going to say as long as I'm not casting T2, but I don't cast T2. I only cast T3. Attackers need to but locate and as long as I'm not casting that, um, really, nine times out of ten, it seems like, players have more success with either the EVR if they're playing a Rooney or the Commando if they're playing Mozzie, uh, simply by the fact that they're just is not enough bullets in that gun. Now in an LMG meta, it's tough being an SMG in an LMG world. You know, one letter difference, but it makes the world mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's, it's one letter, but like, one means sub and one means light. So, yeah. Me. Does the night emoji have a like, sound effect? What? Do we have like sound effect? He's calling you a nerd. A I'm ca I'm being called a nerd. Yes. That's probably worthwhile because I'm literally a Rainbow Six coach. Like. You, are you calling all, all Rainbow Six coaches nerds? Yes. If you're a Rainbow Six coach and you're not a nerd, you're probably not gonna be very successful. But if you're a Rainbow Six coach and you are a nerd, you'll be a loser, but your team will be winning. True. Well, are you really a loser when you're a winner? Yeah. All right, fair enough. Uh, but in any case, speaking of winners, one for three on top at the moment. Five to four, much closer game than we saw previously. Last map obviously ending in a seven to one, I believe, giving top frag the seat. This map only for funsies. But uh, once again, East Over, this is a huge, um, pe people like this. Th this is pretty much standard when we talk about T4 and T3, but at the same time, it simply is not the most effective way to take this. And we see that over and over again, because Top Frag, I mean, even with a Mazi who did not find a single kill, they would waste over a minute of time on that push. And now another kill as well. Tech who finds one and able to fall back very simply. Yeah, you know, just that was just a good pick, you know. There's not much to say about it. That was just taking a fight, knowing you can winning it. That unwavering confidence will win you a lot of fights. Now, one four three is starting to take some map control on to, on the on the map itself, uh, opposite side of the actual site itself. So there's still going to be a lot of utility and players for them to fight through, as well as still making be aware of their flank. But they obviously do have some opportunities. The RCXD here, going for the shield, could be huge, but it's going to get shot out by the Aruni rat corner. So. A Rooney here with the crossfire from Jaeger, nearly going to make it impossible for a player to enter into Dragon, and that is a key to the map control should they want to get across the meat grinder that is Mezzanine. Yeah, I mean, Dragon is just one of those piece places that you got to take it without very effective droning and other util. It's hard to get them out of there. Nyx gets one, but gets traded out immediately. 
killing off that uh, cross. Now it is a 4v3. So the man advantage is still on top frag, but that trade is high value as it does take out one of those dragon players, giving them the possibility to take that map control. However, Sepaku with a long range angle taking out Neb. Very valuable pick. That takes out the Osa. Now Osa can't really place down her shields if she's not alive. Observe. What? <laughs> Insane. 15 seconds to go. 15 seconds left on the clock. 3v2. Kuba goes down. It's all up to observe. He has his hard breach charges, but you know, not much you can do with no time and you're nowhere even near the site. And just get out of aim. I that that Mez like shingles hold, that was really weird. That was one of the weirdest things I've seen so far today. I liked it. Of course, I, the, uh, the former champion also also finishes out that round. Did we classic. Mention, did we mention Guys, he's a he's there's uh, a former world professional champion ultra god king of TPL Teku RG in this lobby? Yeah, did we mention Teku's a a PC champion? He's 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 the uh, he's a season one uh, TPL champion. Yeah, he, he actually won season one of this league. I don't think we pointed that out. He and is, I mean, he's already guaranteed for grand finals with this team if he does play with them. Which means, you know, he's hungry to get that second win under his belt. Imagine two-time TPL champion Teku. Yeah, I mean, you can call him two-time Teku. That's scary. Two-time TPL Teku. That would be uh, quite the alliterative name. And the rest of Top Frag might be able to get their one-time TPL. <laughs> I think also... Two-time TPL Top Frag Teku. We, we also got to point out... Uh, Attacker's objective is to locate a bomb and defuse it. You're talking so <laughs> quiet. <laughs> oh, oh, she was talking about Call of Duty, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> That's a new one. <laughs> but uh here we go most fetters at its site once again no cats here uh last time i checked um direct take occurring from 143 esports this is probably going to be a little bit more effective than the site overtakes that they've attempted in the past because simply speaking top frag is able to deny plenty of time when that occurs we also however have to think on sort of a lurking role so if they're able to catch someone off guard that could be huge, but with Cable and Teku both watching the flank, rather mezzanine, I don't think they're really going to be able to catch anyone off guard. Yeah, and, you know, opening this wall is the site, but, but if they impact it, so it's not a vaultable hole. And Nick's going for a run out of light, lighting up Neb on the Hibana to not take her out, and now she's getting out safely. But Nyx does find Neb. Actually gets out the kill. Uh, yeah, there you go. How many it times? Looks like she's three or four times? Maybe one day they'll learn that Nyx's door is his domain. He runs out of that door every single round, multiple times. Yeah, honestly, that is that is actually... It might sound crazy, but that is actually a standard play. Um, running out. It is a very standard play, but he has done it every single round. Oh, 100%. No, when I say standard, I mean like that is how you play that position. There is the only other way to play that position is opening up the wall yourself. But entry from Dizma, two kills. Nearly finding a third on the round, but Seth finding Pax instead. Now we find ourselves in a 3v2, make that a 2v2 as Kubo wants to even up the score. Now we find ourselves here with decent map control for one for a three. Top frag now in the position to retake. If they're unable to do this, obviously this round will go in favor of 143 and the R4C finds another kill. We find ourselves with Sepku in a 1v2 and it's not going to happen. Desma taking a 4k on the round. Beautifully done. That is why Ash is an entry operator, ladies and gentlemen. I also do believe that uh, Top Frag requested a timeout too. I might be wrong. They did indeed do that. Not gonna lie, I didn't realize they changed the observers so much that you could actually request a timeout. Yeah. Yeah, that just wild. happened this season. It's pretty nice. Yeah, I uh go back to your hole, Mr. Observer. Too bad you'll never have to uh experience how nice the changes are ever again since you're fired. Yeah. Okay.
that that uh that's I feel like us. someone's gonna I feel like someone's gonna take that way too seriously and think <laughs> we just fired him. <laughs> Just well, he's, didn't didn't last map he's been fired. <laughs> yeah, hello. No, no. <laughs> that was last map, chief. <laughs> Dino, Dino, Dino will still be with us. He will probably be. Yeah, I'm, observing grand finals. I'm the dedicated silly little guy. Silly little guy. <laughs> Can we get a silly little guy sound? No. Denied. There we um, go. That's a silly little guy. <laughs> All right, go back, go back to your hole, Mr. Observer. Yep, whole yeah. time. Bye. Um, exhibition room and office, the hole that previously all of Top Frag died in. Unable to find their Top Frags, his 143 was able to just get into the site. Dizma made a beautiful play and found the 4K to end the round, and 143 moves on to match points i guess technically speaking Defenders, protect your bombs that was from being a damn by bad. I mean, okay. honestly i thought that was a nice little color throw you can you, you can screw off <laughs> at least you can tell when she's making a joke your jokes are so bad no one can even tell their jokes oh that was uh, a little is brutal. Also fired. Like the whole production crew's just I fired. fired when I'm not even fired. Located by attack. Hey, I haven't been fired yet. Aw. I can't quit my play by play. That's sad. I didn't know what I just showed up in the gate of the uniform. Yeah, right? They pulled you off the street. Casters are bombed. Um. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Neb playing a little bit of a lurking role as the lion. Something I'm not entirely surprised to see. Kubo is well on the nook, an operator we have not seen so far, but one that has snuck her way into the meta as of late. And honestly, it's fair to see why she's able to get herself around very sneakily. And on a map like this, that can be huge. And obviously, Table thinks so as well. Vigil on the other side of the board has been brought. And now there's going to be some sort of a battle of the sneaky, invisible players who hopefully one of them will come out on top. I want to see them fight each other, honestly. But honestly, I have a feeling Pax is going to be the one eliminating Vigil first. Yeah, I mean... You can't really see him through a barricade, you know, but opening it up does fix that whole vision problem. Now, tabled aware of the, uh, I think his position, or Lion? Who is that? That's Ash. Ash. Ash on that door. So being aware of it, a very tight angle, pretty hard to fight. However, that drum is bangable and he goes away from it. So if that Ash were to push in right now, table would be dead. But he was able to react, and Sapphire getting a pick on Neb, and Table getting the pick on the Pax. Huge two kills. Top right now, is getting man advantage. LMG, uh, Dismay goes in and is able to take out Table. Now it is a three v three, evening out the score line, trading out his teammates' death. Kubo LMG going down from Tech. LMG, yeah, LMG diff, diff. Indeed. He was uh, able to just hold down left mouse. Now Kubo. Uh, as you mentioned, not going to be an influence on this round. Despite his ability to lurk around, there was no fight. Rather, instead, Teku, the player with the cams, eliminated Kubo. So that's going to feel a little bit bad if you're a Nook player. Nook mains everywhere. Take note, because uh, that's not how you do it. In the meantime, though, how you do do it, take control of Terrace. They have control of this part of the map they're gonna have a good jumping off point because mini bar is gonna be weak as well because most of the players aren't looking in that direction obviously there are still going to be some yokai drones on the board that may be able to apply some information and it looks like it's gonna be just enough centrix finds the kill and now top frag needs just one more to bring it to overtime teku Guaranteeing that we are six to six, ladies and gentlemen, overtime in the Japanese high rise. You know, I was talking about beginning of this cast. 1.5 makes a gun infinitely stronger, and Centrix holding that strong position with a 1.5 majority of the time has been kind of proving my point. However, at the end there, Teku bearing nine, known to be a pretty, pretty high kicking secondary with a 1x.
able to close out the round. Pretty pretty good gun. Pretty impressive. You know, I really thought you said that the 1.5 makes the gun better, like the gun 6. Hey, I mean, you could get a lot more accurate gun 6 shots if you had zoom. Can we also True. point out that, in in all fairness, the Bering 9 won Penta the, uh, their world championship. World championship, I sleep. TPL Grand Finals, real shit. I mean, bomb. oops. <laughs> <laughs> I will not be seeing you. The media, man. Yep. <laughs> that is unfortunate. But you know what's not unfortunate? Over time, Top Frag has the opportunity to defend here. One for three. Esports has to crack the egg. They have to get in to T and Karaoke. Generally, here, what I would like to see is a very direct take onto the Black Stairs. Top Black Stairs putting a player as well on Karaoke Window. You can get a lot of pressure, especially when you start applying pressure below. It really is difficult to fend that off once you start tossing in smokes, utility grenades, anything you have in your pockets. That being said, I don't think that's going to be the play. I cannot see the utility that they've brought. But in any case, Osa does have smoke, so that's going to be huge, and not to mention Osa in general. Obviously, those shields are going to be huge for taking little chunks of map control, but it's like they want big chunks of map control instead. 143 wants to cut the map in half, as I mentioned before. Opening up the Dragon Ball allows them to do so from Terrace, but they have to actually get it open first, and whether or not they'll be able to do that is another question. They have lots of pressure over here, and I don't think the pressure is going anywhere. No, it is not. It looks like they will be holding down the port, bunkering down, making sure that that pressure stays right on top of the head. Yeah, good pressure here. They uh, they have droned out these players, but that's not going to do a whole lot if there's no gun behind it. And the 143 looks very hesitant to actually get into the building. They want to hopefully get a little bit of a foothold to fly pressure somewhere else. And it looks like Geisha is going to be the, the place where that takes place. Ah, uh, player playing and makeup, trying to apply a little bit of pressure back to the gauge wall opens soon. Suddenly, Drum is going to be a much less safe position. And as Top Frack is going to need to fall back at some point, a swing could be detrimental. Centric first player off the board, tabled as well. Nyx finds one back, but it's not going to be enough with seven feet down. We find ourselves in a 2v4. Make that a 1v4. Teku, final remaining players eliminated by Pax. What a beautiful play by 143. A gorgeous execute set up very well from the beginning of the round, and the patience was there to guarantee the round for 143. Yeah, I mean, beautifully said. That round from 143, just like how you were able to cast it, was beautiful. Perfect. You know, they oh, were able you. to just take that round and really not make any mistakes. You know, they droned out the enemy players. Then they got another drone, got a gun behind it, walked in and took the fights. They looked at where the defenders were holding. They saw an advantage and immediately took it. Defenders as soon as there was a single crack in that defend, uh, defensive hold, they just acted on it without hesitation. And that's something that, like I said earlier, taking things with confidence, knowing you can win it, and just no hesitation making a play will win you those rounds, will win you those fights every single time. 100% I couldn't agree more, Bagel, and you don't hear me saying that a lot, so that must give you a little bit of an idea. Confidence is key, if we're going to be entirely honest. If you are not confident in what you are doing, you will make mistakes. We call it flow state. It's very important. If you can achieve flow state, you can achieve your highest level of play. And right now, 143 seems to have it in their brains that that's what they're looking for. They need the challenge, but they also find the enjoyment out of it. And 143 is going to benefit from that. If only this was the first map for them. 143 has done a very good job so far but they've already been knocked out, unfortunately. Not something we love to see. Now, Toprag does have the opportunity here. They are going to be looking for a direct take. Takes that generally work a little bit better, but Goyo is going to slow that down. Thankfully, though, they have the Goyo, because otherwise, slowing them down would be a matter of simply trying to apply pressure with weapons, and if you are doing that, you're going to lose bodies. Hopefully trades, but not all the time. No, definitely not all the time. A lot of the time, this, uh, these past two maps, especially this map and the previous map especially, we have seen not really trades, but more one person goes down, and then like, you know, give it 30 seconds later, someone else goes down. 
So sure, traded, but not really traded to kill. Do you think Nyx is going to pick themselves back up? No. Oh, I think their thing is on uh, cooldown, so hopefully they'll be able to do that in just a moment, or a friend will do it. But instead, we have Buck instead making some of the pressure, and this pressure is vertical. Bottom up, that's you. Pop is already is here, and that allows some easier angles. They're going to be more aware of where the opponents are. And now, Top Frag is looking to get aggressive. Observe first player off the board, but quickly trade it out onto Teku. Yep, now we are in a 4v4 situation, very even, but Top Frag has taken more control. However, Nyx gets taken down by Dejma, who I'd just like to point out his stat line is absolutely crazy this game. Neb gets taken up by Seppuku, you know, finished him off with the pistol, however. Dejma running out that door, getting a huge pick onto Seppuku. It is a 2v3, not looking good for Top Frag. They had the positions, but they could not win the fights, and it is looking to be in favor of the team that is on match point. Now, I will say if there were two players on two operators you want for this, it's tabled and Centrix, both very clutch players. One with the buck, he's still got the soft breach, and one with the hard breach and the claymore, so this run out might be less effective. Centrix, though, still goes down. Pax has not been punished, and tabled finds himself in a 1v2. Definitely still possible. He is buck, he has the... well, the... what is that called? The good gun. He has the good one, the C8. But not enough. No, the C8 is not enough to handle a weird elevation fight, which loses them. No. That's gonna be it. That's gonna be it for us. Hard fought victory. One four three is able to take skyscraper, a map that they seem just that much more confident on. And honestly, it pays off. Does it pay off though? Let's be real. We'll see next week. Well, we won't see next week because here's the thing. Top frag is still the ones going to grand finals. Yes, 143 has put on their last hurrah, and it was a beautiful, a beautiful game, and one that I was very welcome to cast. Yeah, right. I very it's much enjoyed the time here, but that should being I, said... Should I, uh, should I move the, uh, the winners up real quick for a yeah, special uh, little segment? We have, uh, we have a, uh, an interview with, actually... All of Top Frag, who will be joining us momentarily as we uh, get them here into the uh, into the VC. So don't go anywhere. In fact, I'll probably keep talking your ear off. Well, first off, it's our kitten, Teku, former TPL champion and now moving on to the grand finals once more. Tabled as well. Couldn't clutch out the last round, but he still clutched out our hearts. Tabled, you suck. That's my bad. Yo, what's hey. up? All right, I'll, I need how's, to get my... how's the the stream quality? Oh, Terrible, <laughs> <laughs> bro. I was bro, fucking miserable that last map. I just wanted you. it to be over. You know, Dina, real quick though, I'm kind of disappointed in you. I kind of hit a wild, uh, a nice cancel 360 one tap on some guy on one of the rounds. I'm kind of mad you didn't get that. Well, uh, maybe let me know before you hit it. Yeah, hello. <laughs> yeah, that's on you. Honestly, I mean, that's on you, Nix. <laughs> Uh, but uh, yeah. in in any case, I do I do have a few questions for uh, okay. all of Top Frag. If you guys could answer them for I me. So. Uh, first one, just being, how are you feeling going to uh, going to Grand Finals? I, was I dropped seven, so I'm better than them. All right. You know. All right. Really, we've known that one four three is just an awful team, so we weren't really worried going into this match. That's why we just played so confident that first one, that first map. All right. Well, confidence paid off. And the mm -hmm. second thing is that I uh. I heard it's somebody's birthday. Yeah, it's Jinx's oh. birthday. Yeah. yeah. Big dog. More or less than Happy birthday. Two hours. Happy birthday. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> got the music going. Someone's singing. <laughs> I don't want to start. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday! Oh, so awesome. yeah. you one? Are you two? Are you three? Are you four? Shut up, next. Oh, don't sorry. tell next to shut up, table. <laughs> well, yeah, table. everyone, wish Jinx our competitive official slash uh, fourth caster very happy birthday. So th thank happy you for birthday, being man. here. Um, actually, it's not today; it's tomorrow. So I guess I lied yeah, to you. So I take I take that last that whole last thirty seconds back. Well, um, all we gotta do. Yeah, is I hope you have a really uh, terrible birthday. 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, All we have to do is keep the stream live for another two hours, <laughs> and we can celebrate your birthday officially. Yeah, exactly. Real. We'll just ruin it. Yeah. All right. Any more questions, Yali? I'm, 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 I'm ready to answer them. Ask me questions. Yep. Table. Why are you so cracked? So I can get the next one. Oh. Table. Why are you just a god, dude? Yeah, table. What do they feed you for breakfast to get you that clutch rating? Um, I don't eat. <laughs> you don't eat. <laughs> what do you What do you eat? <laughs> uh, I had like chicken at like three, but it tasted funny, so I threw it out and haven't eaten since. That was my only food today. All right now, Tekka. Yeah. All I gotta say is, what What do you prefer to do? Press W, A, S, and D, or press T, the rest of your keyboard, and then enter. Uh, I didn't even type type that much today. I was more yeah, I was so upset about the game. Table. That's kind uh, yeah, I was, that was me. This, this was not a hand. typing day. This was not one of those days. Unfortunately, the question isn't really valid because my type my my all chat key is bound to slash. So, well, that's just the wrong opinion. Uh, opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I was in yeah, mine's also on Y, so also an invalid question. Yeah. Mine's on end key. Yeah, you gotta do your research before you ask this kind of. Okay, yeah. sorry. I'll make sure to check your Liquipedia pages. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where are those Liquipedia pages, by the way? Does anyone else have any questions? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go by Ask Seb. me questions. Ask, other questions. Get, get a question yeah, ask Seb some questions. Yeah, Seb's got to get one. Hi. Seb. Does anyone have a question for Seb? No, I'm fucking terrible. <laughs> no. Seb, why do you have your hair long? Seb, what uh, what grip do you have on the R4C? Off the dome. What do you mean? I wasn't playing Nash. What grip do you have on the R4C? You moron. Oh, uh, oh, uh, no grip, obviously. No, no grip. Yeah. <gasps> I stand. I stand. Yeah, you just got laugh tracked. <laughs> oh, Fuck. Stan, you missed it. Who won? Uh, Us, unfortunately. Yeah, one. top rig. It's going to finals. Oh, oh that's. Okay. Right. Yeah, even even though the league does is against one for Find find another question to ask, man. I'm bored. Okay, my last question for Teku is Teku, are you excited to watch Fate soon? Yeah. Yeah, this is my right. first. I got a question. Who's who Eglin? What? Who Eglin? What? I G L N. Oh, there was no That's bold of you to yeah, that's bold of you yeah, okay. to say. I was I was so I was really calling things. I, so I, I, I would say I would say I was the closest thing to uh IGL. Yeah. All right, so Seppuku, as the IGL, what was your favorite call that you made? <laughs> uh, well, I tried to get everyone to play in bunker one time, but no one listened to me. <laughs> we just don't fuck with you like that little bro. <laughs> 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 okay, and a question for the entire team: What do you? All right, first part: How do you feel going into grand finals? I'm not scared. I don't really mm -hmm. care. Yeah, I good. just dropped 17 I'm against. I'm getting some balloons. So. I'm the I'm the only person to ever go one and seven on Fink LMG. You suck. Yeah, you are actually awful. Second question: uh, How how did you feel and how did you react to like four rushes in a row in the first map? Um, we're just like sitting there confused, like, wow, how are these guys so awful? Uh, yeah, I was also I was also kind of like struck because I got shit on round one and then I kind of took that offensively and I ended up doing shit map one. But you didn't. You took that personally. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. I, 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 I had to turn on like good music for map two to actually be able to like shoot my gun. It was all it was just jamming up map one. That's what happened. Yeah, unfortunately, map two they loaded my gun with BB, uh, BB gun. Like they they, they swapped they swapped. It yeah, you suck, bro. I was miserable map two. I just wanted it to be over. <laughs> the the rehost kind of killed it. That's all. I've been eleven tabled against know. these mid players. How do you feel? At least I wasn't Neb. <laughs> you weren't Neb. Dude, I yeah. owned that Neb guy. I think he has the combined worst stat line over any BO3 in this in this league so far, like this season. And it was only two maps. Yeah, only two maps. And they won one of them. Like he Oh yeah, he, speaking he, of uh speaking like of two maps, we uh we had two maps played and now they're both over. And um Yeah. There's also a stream that is occurring in the background that uh, no longer needs to be occurring. So I want to say thank you to everyone who came out and visited. I know it was a little to Mickey. Um, that being said, it was really fun. Uh, thanks for casting with me, Bagel and Soundboard and competitive official Ashy. And thank you for playing to all of the top frag fellas. And I hope you all guys uh, wish you all good luck 
in grand finals. But in the meantime, that's going to be it for us. So yeah, thank you all. And we'll